In addition to research at Columbia, many institutions are working to solve the problem of Alzheimer's disease. I also had the opportunity to go to the Fisher Center at Rockefeller University, where Nobel laureate Dr. Paul Greengard leads his team in the search to solve the mystery of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is believed by most investigators in the field to be caused by a toxic substance called beta amyloid. This beta amyloid accumulates only in the brain and only in the brains of people who are destined to have Alzheimer's disease. It's a rather a puzzle as to why it's specific just to the brain and just to certain regions of the brain and only in a subpopulation of individuals. Since we believe that the Alzheimer's disease is caused by the toxic nature of the beta amyloid, what we're trying to do is to find mechanisms to prevent the formation of beta amyloid or to prevent its damage. For example, our research group has recently shown that the beta amyloid causes the movement of important proteins from the surface of the cell into the interior. And we think that starts a chain of reactions so that the nerve cells no longer communicate with each other properly. And we're trying to understand exactly how the beta amyloid does that. And, and by understanding the chain of biochemical reactions by which this happens, we should be able to develop inhibitors to prevent those steps and thereby prevent the loss of the synaptic communication between nerve cells. The other approach is inhibiting the formation of beta amyloid uh, will end up with the out so that the patient won't have this toxic substance in their brains and that will uh, uh, reduce the incidence of, of uh, Alzheimer's. One of the puzzling things is that despite the vast amount of research has been done on this compound, nobody understands its biological role. And this is rather surprising given the intense effort in this area. In fact, there's probably a lot more research going on now in the pharmaceutical industry than in academia, or originally it was the other way around, because of the potential enormous markets that will be um, created by the development of drugs that prevent uh, beta amyloid formation. There's a great deal of hope that medication will be developed to slow down or prevent the development of Alzheimer's. In patients with advanced stages of Alzheimer's, I personally am not hopeful that there'll be a big reversal of the course of the disease. Because in advanced Alzheimer's, many of the critical nerve cells in the brain have died. And you can't make dead cells come alive. Remarkably, uh, the best thing you can do doesn't, in my own opinion, and this is not shared by everyone, uh, it does not involve medications. The best things are to stay as mentally active as possible and as physically active as possible. There was a beautiful study just published a few months ago in which they took mouse models of Alzheimer's disease. Mice were going to get the mouse equivalent of Alzheimer's disease. Half of them were made to run on a treadmill and half were not. And the ones who ran on the treadmill had a much slower rate of onset of the disease than those which were just lying around drinking beer. Uh, I was sufficiently convinced by this paper that now instead of running for 40 minutes a day on a treadmill, I run for an hour a day on the treadmill. So I think that, you know, staying as mentally active as possible and as physically active as possible are really the best things one can do. And there's a great deal of evidence to support the, the beneficial effects of these two types of activity. Mm -hmm.